Good afternoon, agents. Thank you for coming. Earlier this morning, an unknown person or persons broke into this very lab and stole a very rare, very valuable, and very dangerous isotope. I can't tell you how important it is that we recover this isotope and identify the culprits. All that was found at the scene of the crime was this note written in green ink. A sample of the ink has already been analyzed by another laboratory, and investigators have recovered these three green pens from various offices around the building. It's your job to match the proper pen to the ink that wrote the note. The identities of the owners of these pens will be kept secret to avoid bias. You're going to do this by a process called paper chromatography. I'll show you how it works and explain a little bit of the science behind it. We're all counting on you, agents. I know you can do this for us. The process of paper chromatography is a fairly simple one, but it's very important that you take care in your results. We don't want any ambiguity when it comes to matching up this ink. You're going to need the following pieces of equipment. A strip of filter paper. This is nothing more than just a very porous paper. You'll need a pencil. You'll need a ruler, small beaker, and you're going to use some isopropyl alcohol. That's just rubbing alcohol. I'll show you how to set this up. And while it's running, we'll talk a little bit about what makes it work. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to measure about two centimeters from the end of the filter paper. And it doesn't have to be exact, but about two centimeters from the end, you're going to draw a little circle in pencil. Now there's a reason we're doing it in pencil, and we don't want to use pen, so make sure that that's in pencil. Then you're going to take your ink, whichever marker you decide to work on first, and in that circle, you're going to make a dot of ink. Now you don't want to make a huge dot, uh, but just a, a reasonably good size so that you can see it. Okay, You're going to take the piece of paper, and you're going to crimp it along its length. Now you're not going to fold it and crease it. You're just going to sort of half fold it along its length. And the reason is we want this to be able to stand up in the beaker. Take your beaker. You want to put a small amount of alcohol in the bottom of the beaker. Uh, you definitely don't want the height of the alcohol in the beaker to be greater than the distance between the bottom of the paper and the dot because you don't want the dot to be submerged in the alcohol. All you then need to do is to stand it up like this in the beaker and allow the alcohol to travel up the paper. Now it's going to take a little while so while we're waiting why don't we take a look at how this works. Paper chromatography is only one of many types of chromatography. The word chromatography has its origins in Greek the Greek word chroma, which means color, and grapho, which means to draw. So chromatography literally is a color drawing. But in chemistry, it means so much more than that. Really, chromatography is a separation technique. It's a way of separating components of a mixture based on some physical property. The property that we are using to separate out the components of the ink is polarity. We have three main parts to our chromatography experiment. The paper, the alcohol, and the ink, which is made of a mixture, perhaps, of inks. All chromatography experiments contain three parts that are similar. The paper in our chromatography experiment is called the matrix, or the stationary phase. It's the surface on which the separation is going to occur. In other types of chromatography, the matrix may be small gel beads or glass wool, other substances that don't move, that allow a mixture to move along them and then thereby be separated out. The alcohol in our experiment is called the solvent or sometimes the mobile phase. Mobile means to move, and so the alcohol is actually going to move along our paper. 
and it is going to help to separate out the mixture. The mobile phase, or the solvent, separates. It does the separating. And finally, the third piece, our ink, our mixture. In all chromatography experiments, there's a mixture you're trying to separate. You separate it into fractions, or pieces, of the mixture, components. We don't know if our ink is going to separate, because if it's not made of multiple different compounds, different inks, it won't separate at all. But if it is made of other compounds, other inks, for example, blue and yellow, then we hope that paper chromatography will allow those to separate out. The components of a mixture are either going to be attracted to the, the matrix, the stationary phase, or they're going to be attracted to the solvent, the mobile phase. In the case of this paper chromatography experiment, our solvent is very polar. Our matrix is very nonpolar. Matrix is made of cellulose, which is nonpolar. So depending on the components of our ink, the ones that are more polar will travel along better with the solvent, whereas the ones that are more nonpolar will tend to stay put. And we can use that as a way of separating out the mixtures. Now, that's a sort of qualitative way of doing it. But if we want to be more specific, we can actually do some measuring. We can measure the ratio of how far the solvent traveled along our paper as compared to how far our mixture components traveled. And that's something called retention factor, or RF. A substance's retention factor is, is simply that. It's how well it was retained on the paper, on the matrix. And we can calculate it. We simply need to measure the distance that our mixture pieces went and the distance that our solvent went and divide. Because we're dividing a length by a length, retention factor has no units. And so once our solution has been developed, we will measure some retention factors and we'll also measure the retention factors of the analysis that was done by the other lab. And we can therefore figure out which ink wrote the note. Once we know which ink wrote the note, the owner of that ink, we're going to have to call them in for questioning. Our analysis is done. It's time to calculate our retention factor and see if we can match the ink. So our chromatogram, that's what you call this filter paper now that we've done the separation, uh, is finished. And as you can see, our little dot of green has separated into two colors, some yellow here, which stops about there, and some blue, which goes up here. If you can see that the wet area here and the dry area, there's a line, what we call the solvent front, uh, between them. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is to sketch with the pencil right about where that line is. Uh, because the water is going to continue to move along this paper. And when it moves, um, I don't want to lose my reference points. Okay. So really what I now have to do is I have to make some measurements. And there are, for this particular situation, I have two colors. I have a yellow color and a blue color. Uh, so there are going to be three measurements that I need to make. The first measurement is going to be from my origin circle to where the yellow color stops. The second measurement will be from the origin circle to where the blue color stops. Those are called DS, or the distance that the solute traveled. I'm going to measure in centimeters, so I need to be careful. I'm going to take, for example, pretty much right at about the middle of where the origin is to about where the yellow ends. That's my estimation, and I'm going to measure that in centimeters. And remember that we measure in centimeters, so we need to include hundredths. So that's 3.7, I'm going to say 3.79 for that one. So the, that's called the DS for the yellow. Let's write that down. DS for the yellow was 3.79 centimeters. Okay. Now the next one I'm going to measure is the DS for the blue. Starting in the same position, and I'm going to stop up here where the blue ended. So we're going to say that that looks like it's about 5.5 Five, 5.57. I'm going to call that 5.57. That is the DS for the blue. That's 5.57 
centimeters. Now, the third measurement that I have to make is the distance from the origin to where the solvent ended, the solvent front. And I'm going to call that DF, F for front. So I'm going to measure from that line that I drew down to the origin circle, and I see that that's 5.61. 5.61, that is my DF, 5.61 centimeters. So the only thing that remains now is to calculate the RF values for the blue and the yellow. Each color gets its own RF value. The RF calculation is going to be DS divided by DF. That's all I need to do. So the RF for the yellow is DS, which is 3.79 centimeters, divided by 5.61 centimeters. That's my DF value. Centimeters will cancel. RF does not have a unit. And the RF for the blue will have a value of DS for the blue, 5.57 centimeters, divided by the same DF, 5.61 centimeters. And again, centimeters cancel. You can do the calculations yourself if you want to check them, but that's really all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Once you have your RF values for your colors, compare them against the standard that was created by the other labs, the analysis of the ink on the note, and hopefully we'll get a match. We're counting on you agents. It's all up to you. Good luck.